Welcome back to Crew, Christians Rising Up Youth Group. I haven't seen you all in a while. I really, really miss you all so much. We're still recording here at the Kingdom Church because we still want to get the message of the gospel out to you, to your friends, whoever that's watching. We really miss you from everybody from Jeremiah to DJ, to both of our DJs, to Certified, to London and all of you, we miss you so much. Brianna and Micaiah and Aaliyah, we miss you all so much. We want to do a special shout out right now for our class of 2020 who didn't have the traditional graduation or prom, but we want to send all our love to you. We want to send it out to Quentin Ty. We love you from a APK Apopka graduating. We want to send it out for Micaiah up in Seminole County at Lake Brantley. Also in Seminole County, Imani from Seminole High School. Congratulations. And last but not least, Willoughby in East River, uh, Orange County. We want to say congratulations to you all. To Damien um, from Evans, we want to say congratulations. We love you so much. We wish the best for you. And we want to celebrate you on July 19th here at the church. So if you haven't received our emails yet, give me a call, let me know. We wanna reach out to you because we wanna celebrate you here on July 19th. We want you to wear your cap and gown, your cords. We want you to bring all of your pictures to set up in the lobby. We wanna celebrate you. We wanna uh, give you a gift. And we also wanna present our scholarships for 2020. So make sure you're here Sunday, July 19th, so we can celebrate you. Let's go ahead and pray so we can jump into our lesson. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for today and this opportunity, God, to learn from your word. We thank you, God, that you will make your word plain to us and what we need to do in our lives, God, to live an example that shows your love into this world, God. Help us to take from the people that's in the Bible, God, and learn from what their lives will teach us, God, today. Help us, God, to have a heart that's clean before you. Forgive us for those things we've done wrong. Wash us, God, now from those things we thought wrong, we said wrong. Help us, God, never to walk in that way again, but to live a life that's moving towards perfection, God, and holiness and righteousness, because with your spirit, it's possible. So we ask and invite your spirit right now into our hearts, into our minds, God, and so that you can have full control. We thank and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Today we're starting our new series and it's a long title and the title is what to do when you don't know what to do. Now I'm not just talking about what to do when you're bored. I'm talking about just certain situations where you may not know what to do or how to handle it. And so we're going to talk a little bit from that perspective. Um, so let me start with this question. What are some things that you do at home that you wouldn't necessarily do other places? I mean, sometimes do you feel like you live in two different worlds? Like some at somebody else's house, you probably wouldn't leave the dirty dishes in the sink, but in your house, you leave the dirty dishes in the sink or leave the dirty dishes for somebody else to fill the dishwasher. Are there other things like uh, you wouldn't leave your dirty socks in the middle of your friend's bedroom if you're sleeping over, but you do it at your house? Or you wouldn't uh, treat a teammate as mean as you treat your little brother or sister? There's certain times that we kind of act a little different. Maybe it's because we are used to our family or we kind of expect them to take a, a little bit more of our mess. But today what we're gonna talk about is that there are certain times when we act completely different and depending on where we are. Sometimes we live between two different worlds and in our world, we want it our way. We kind of expect things to go the way we want it. We kind of expect our mom to fix foods that we like for dinner. We kind of expect the, uh, for things to go at the plans that we want to do. If we want to hang out with our friends, we kind of expect, uh, who cares if our sister has a concert or our brother has a play, we want to hang out with our friends. And we kind of center our lives around ourselves sometimes. But that we kind of live that way because we kind of expect our, our parents, our family to love us anyway. We think a lot of times about how things affect us more than how do they affect our global family. And so there's a story that we want to talk about and a guy we're going to talk about in this video and in the next video, and his name is Joseph. Um, you may remember a little bit about Joseph from things like he had a coat of many colors or um, that he was falsely accused and thrown into prison. But we're gonna start kind of with his story today. And his story is like, wow, it's like a Netflix movie. Um, you got everything from falsely accused, you got sold into slavery, you got um, set up in prison and left in prison. People lied on him, he was accused of rape. Like, it's a, a serious real deal story that Joseph has. So let's go ahead and start there. Let me give you some background. So Joseph um, 
father's name was Jacob. And for those that may not know, Jacob really loved his mom. His mom's name was Rachel. But when it was time to marry his mom, Jacob got duped by his father-in-law. And he ended up marrying Rachel's sister, Leah. And the Bible actually says that basically Leah was cross-eyed. I mean, so she was nothing pretty to look at. And so the father-in-law knew he couldn't really marry Leah off. And so when it came time, he switched the two daughters and Jacob ended up marrying Leah. And then Jacob worked seven more years to marry Rachel. And she, then he was able to marry Rachel. So as their life continued, Rachel was unable to have kids. So Rachel was the favorite wife. And you know how Bible times are a little different. You can have more than one wives back then. Um, and actually Leah had some sons and then there were other women that weren't really married to Jacob, but they had some sons. And so by the time uh, Joseph was born, Joseph was born to Rachel. She was finally able to have a child and Joseph was her first child. And so by the time Joseph was born, he already had 10 brothers. 10 brothers from three other moms that were in their family. So we're already talking about a whole lot of family dynamics. You think it's kind of rough in your house sometimes with one mom and one dad? When Joseph was born, his dad had 10 other kids, well, 10 other sons. Usually the Bible just lists the sons. They don't necessarily list the names of all the daughters. So it's most likely that he had more than 10 kids, but he had at least 10 other sons when Joseph was born from at least three other women. And they all lived together. They all traveled together. They all lived, did life together. So Joseph was from Jacob's favorite wife. And because she was barren for so long, she couldn't have kids for so long, Joseph became that favorite son. I really hope none of you have to deal with that where you feel like one of your siblings is the favorite of the family, but Joseph was that favorite son. And Jacob, his dad, didn't hide it. It wasn't like some kind of like sigh him some extra money for allowance kind of covert kind of thing. No, one of the things he decided to do was to give Joseph a coat and they said it was a coat of many colors. So back in, like up into our society, um, this would be like if um, your dad gave his favorite son some Jordans while you got the champion shoes or the off-brand no-name shoes while your brother got the Jordans, the newest ones, the most expensive ones. That's kind of like what Jacob did to his sons. And so needless to say, Joseph's brothers didn't like him much either. Um, but then things kind of continued after that. So he already was the favorite son from the favorite wife. And then Joseph started having dreams. And these weren't just regular dreams. These were like real deal, pretty much prophetic dreams. And one of the first dreams that he had is found in Genesis 37. So if you have your Bible app or if you have your Bible and you're following us along, we're gonna go to Genesis chapter 37. Hopefully it won't take you long to get there because Genesis is the first book. But chapter 37 is where we'll find, where we're reading today. And we're gonna start here at the sixth verse. I'll be reading from the NIV version. And he said, he, which they're talking about Joseph, said to them, his brothers, listen to this dream I had. We were binding sheaves out of grain out in the field. And suddenly my sheaf rose and stood upright while your sheaves gathered around mine and bowed to it. So basically what Joseph was saying was this was like a imagery of his brothers bowing down to him as though he had some power over them. Now, mind you, his brothers already do not like him at all. But now he's telling them about this dream and now everyone knows that he has these real prophetic dreams. Now he's telling them about these dreams about how he's going to rule over them. Probably not his best decision to make there. Oh, but then it gets better. So we can continue in verse eight and it says, his brother said to him, do you intend to reign over us? Would you actually rule us? And they hated him all the more because of his dream and what he said. The Bible says his brothers hated him. They didn't just like not like them, him, just play practical jokes on him everywhere. They hated him. So this was a like harsh life um, to have 10 brothers, 10 brothers to hate you. Not just one brother that always gonna like treat you badly, 10 brothers to hate you. Then he has another dream. 
And in his next dream, it says that, he says that he saw the sun and the moon and the stars, and they also bowed down to him. And so what this dream represented was his brothers and their family were the stars and the sun and the moon was his, their mother and their father. And so basically what Joseph was saying, like the whole family was bowing down to him. So as you can imagine, this is pretty much what pretty much was the end for his brothers. They had had it. Um, this was too much to him saying that he was going to have power over the whole family. So this is probably not his best move, not his best decision. So can you imagine the tension in this family? Like, could you imagine dinners for his family with this brother that thinks that he is so much better than you and that the father that feeds into this, the father that treats him better than you? It was rough. You know, we deal with a lot of things in our families and you might be dealing with some things in your families right now, but Joseph had it pretty rough at this particular time. So he was most likely um, super insensitive of how his brothers felt about him having these dreams. And his brothers were probably super sensitive about him having these dreams. And the, the parents weren't helping the situation at all. And so both of them were not really thinking about how they were affecting the, each other. So all they could see was really how things were affecting them. And the tension grew and the tension grew just like a real good movie um, where you don't know what's gonna happen until something breaks. Family life can be very complicated. And that's what this, this Bible story tells us, is that family life can be very complicated. It teaches us how to pay attention to how our actions affect those that we live with on a day-to-day -day basis. It shows us and reminds us that tension left unresolved will never just go away. So if you think you can just ignore the feelings that you're feeling in your family right now, and it'll be better tomorrow, it may not happen tomorrow, it may not be a flare-up tomorrow, but they just don't go away. They have to be addressed until, so they won't escalate into something that's bigger. So as we continue with his story, Joseph could have done some things differently. He could have thought about, well, maybe I shouldn't tell this second dream to my family. Or the brothers could have said, well, maybe we don't have to treat him so badly. He didn't dream this himself. It came from God. Um, so maybe God is trying to tell us something. Maybe the father could have play it down to favoritism a little bit. Um, maybe everyone could have just ignored Joseph in his arrogance and telling these dreams. The point is that family drama is family drama. And we all have our own family drama that we're dealing with. Um, whether you are the first born or you are the angry one in the family, or if you're the favorite in the family, or if you're the quiet one in the family, the role you play um, in your family is your role. And so pay attention to how your words and your actions contribute to the tone and the temperature of your house, especially now where we're in our houses a lot more with our families. You may have noticed things have been a little bit more rough or maybe things have been a lot better because you're realizing that you get to know a little bit more about that sister that you just thought didn't like you, but maybe she just didn't like the way you always sung Frozen songs over and over again. Or maybe she just, you just really like Drake and she really doesn't like Drake, but you keep on playing his mu the music really loud. So whatever it may be, um, find out maybe what's making it so tense in your house. We're gonna go more into uh, Joseph's story on other videos. And I want you to tune in there and kind of see how all of this unfolds because it unfolds in a very unique way. But there's one other scripture that I want to read to you before I let you go from this particular video. It's found in Philippians. And Philippians is in the New Testament. It's near the back of the Bible. I want you to flip there. I'm gonna give you a second or two to do that. Because I want you to read this scripture. And it's, and it's a few verses, so I want you to read along. It's Philippians chapter two, verse three through eight. And again, I'll be reading from the NIV version. In this scripture, Paul is talking and he wrote a church to the church of Philippi. And he, was saying, he said this, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather in humility, value others above yourself. Not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature of God, did not consider himself equality with God, something to be used to his own advantage. 
Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in a human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on the cross. So what Paul is saying to these people is a couple of things here is Jesus sets our example. Jesus was both God and man. And as God, he could have said, I'm not gonna let these people beat me up. I'm not gonna go to the cross and die for them. I'm not gonna let them spit on my face. I'm not gonna let them whip me all night long. I'm not gonna let them talk about me bad and tell and say that I'm the devil. But they did all of that. And Jesus, in, in his description, he said he stayed humble. And so whatever you're going through in your family, know these couple of things, that the tension that is there, stay humble. Do what's necessary to get help though. Let your um, let someone in authority know what's going on. Let Talk to your parents in a respectful way. Get them to see your side of things if you feel like you're being mistreated. But also watch your actions, how you react to things in the house, how, what temperature and tone that you bring to the house. There's a couple of things that I want you to ask yourself and we'll finish here. What if everyone in your house paid attention to how they affect everyone else? What if everyone paid attention to how they affect everyone else? What would it do for your relationship with the people who live in your house? What would it do for the general level of tension or peace at your house? What if it started with you? It could, it could start with you. You could be the change in your house. So think about your decisions, your actions, your words, and make sure they're positive, uplifting, God-inspired words. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for this opportunity to dive into your word, to see examples of Joseph and his life and all the drama that he had in his life, God. But we thank you, God, that you had control over his life and his family situations, God. And as we continue to learn about what happens in Joseph's life, God, help us to continue to trust you what's happening in our lives, God. Help us to have the right words and the actions in our home, God, that brings life into our home, that we won't treat the people in our homes worse than we treat people on the outside, God. Help us to treat the people in our homes with as much love or even more love, God, than that we give those on the outside. As we give our coaches and our teachers and our friends love, help us to give our parents and our sisters and our brothers love in the house, God. Patience, God, in the house. Forgiveness, God, in the house. Understanding, God, in the house, God. And we'll forever praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Until next time. Keep on reading your Bibles. There's a new version app. Um, and the U version app has this series where you can read along with us the different scriptures about Joseph's life. You can even skip ahead and see what happens. Or you can wait to the next video that will be dropping soon. Thank you. We love you.